Hey guys, it's lovely to have your company right here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel where it's going to be um, not as long tutorial on this one. This one's more going to be technique wise. This is going to be what we class as fire and ice. Now, if you're in the craft club, you may be familiar with the technique when it comes to craft club month number two, which was all about gilding techniques. If you're not in the craft club or you are in the craft club but you just want that little bit extra help video wise tutorial wise for you to follow when it comes to the fire and ice technique then you've got this tutorial to go back to fire and ice using the gilding flakes using a double-sided adhesive sheet and then iridescent glitter over the top but what we're going to do up until about 10 minutes ago while i was getting ready to do this i thought i know last night i was using the foil press and black card silver foil and one of our backgrounds i just foiled as normal and i thought wonder what it would look like if you put a sheet of double-sided adhesive over the top then the iridescent glitter over the top Mwah! wow it looks fab so we're going to do that as well so it's kind of like a double tutorial when it comes to the technique we're going to do the fi fire and ice we are going to use the foil press and we'll do the Foil and ice. There we go. Fire and ice and foil and ice. There we go. That's what we're going to do. So before we get started, thank you so much to everyone that continues to like the tutorials that I popped up by giving a thumbs up. Those as well that can leave a comment. You will notice I'm getting better at replying to them. And of course, for those that do uh, subscribe. And if you do choose to hit that bell notification, well, thank you very much. It really, really is much appreciated. And the more I do these, the more I realise how much they actually do help and for those that do also share my youtube channel or share the tutorials that i put up thank you very much it's much appreciated if you don't don't worry i still appreciate your company and viewing my uh, tutorials but um yeah for those that do it is also appreciated so i've got my coca-cola ready shall we begin let's do it now what we're going to be using is we're going to be using our Stay Sticky Glue Adhesive Toolkit. Now, you might not have this specific one, but you'll maybe got the ones from Sarah's Signature, Nature Garden, the glues and all that are the same. You get a little pot of gilding flakes in them as well. You can use that if you've got it. But I want to act as though you've not got those little gilding flake kits. You've not got craft clubs, but what you've got is you've got a tub of gilding flakes you've got the tool kit you've got a stencil you've got iridescent glitter you've got them all in separate components so let's pull them together so we're going to need that the stencil i'm going to use is regal rose it was a layering stencil we're just going to use the one layer when it comes to that silhouette of the rose use any stencil that you want to but this is what we're going to be using i'm going to be using my gold gilding flakes I'm going to be using my double-sided adhesive sheets here. Now, I don't have any left over of my Crafter's Companion ones. So, shock horror, I'm using sticks too. But they're both exactly the same. It's a layer of double-sided adhesive sheets. And I'm going to then use white cardstock for the fire and ice. I'm then going to use black cardstock for the foil and ice. As well as the ornate swirls background. And then for the actual glitter of them all, I'm going to use the iridescent when it comes to the Kingfisher. So that's kind of the key components that I am going to use. So let's take my white cardstock here and let's go overhead. Also, when it comes to the foil and ice, I'm going to be using the Aurora Silver. So take your chosen stencil, whatever stencil that you wish to use. It could be a silhouette, it could be a layering, it could be mandala, floral, absolutely anything. And this is the one I'm going to use because it's more of an open silhouette feel. You can use absolutely any stencil you so wish. It doesn't have to be open, doesn't have to be detailed. It can be any that you want. And then let's take out our toolkit here. I'm going to take my liquid glue. I'm going to take my little dry sponge. It's not dry now because my toolkit that I've been using and I've got a little sponge already in when it comes to my gold gilding flakes right so if you've never used them before what I would suggest is you layer your glue in and manipulate it just go round and round and round and let the glue 
soak into your pad. Now, mine's been well used, well loved, so therefore it's already got a lot of glue already in the sponge. But what I want to do is I want to add, but I find it easier putting it onto my, my glass mat or my craft mat. I'm going to take my stencil. Now, that's already quite tacky. So, I would recommend using your repositionable spray. Now, I know when it comes to inking through stencils, I don't tend to do that. But anything wet-based, water-based, anything like glitter pastes or your glues, I would recommend just using the repositionable adhesive. If you don't have it, don't worry, you can just tape it down. But what we want to make sure is that all those fine, fine detail parts of the stencil is nicely adhered to your card. And then what we're going to do, so I've not that long had lunch and there was obviously a lot of salt in what I had and I am rather thirsty. So if I do go quiet, that's why. So this is what I mean by I do like to go in and dab it in and then I like to take a little bit of the excess off and then I'm just going to dab and twist through my stencil. So dabbing and twisting all the way through. I don't want to blend or move back and forwards because I don't want to pull up any of the detailed lines of the stencil. So we're just going to keep going. And as long as you keep the cap on your actual dry pad, then um, you're going to be fine. It might stiffen slightly, but this is where just put your glue onto your craft mat, glass mat, whatever you're using, and then kind of the water base within the glue will soften it slightly. And this is still my original one. This is still my original ink pad from when we got the tool kit. So let's just keep working, working that in making sure we've got a nice coverage. You can use a finger dauber if you want, but you have to give it a really, really good clean and wash afterwards. Otherwise it will go rock hard and very, very hard to reuse afterwards. So putting the cap on, I'm just going to take a wipe because my glass mat will stay sticky unless I clean it off. And that's a great thing with this glue, the liquid glue, it's a stay sticky glue. So it will stay sticky and tacky until you put something on it. So let's dry that off. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come along and we're going to carefully peel that off. And then I'm not sure if you can, you can kind of see, there you go, you can kind of see that watermark effect. Now that stays sticky until I put my flakes on there. But what I want to do is I just want to make sure that I clean as much of this off as possible. Your best medium to wash this is going to be lukewarm soapy water to take that sticky glue off. But any bits that stay sticky, don't worry, because it's a repositionable and it's a stay sticky glue, if it does stay a little bit tacky at least it's not going to dry permanently in the packaging it'll just peel away from one another so let's put them in to the packet again so for anyone that wants to know that was the regal rose that i've used so what we're then going to do is that's more than enough time to let that dry and when I say dry it's not going to dry dry it's going to go tacky if I put my hand on there that's going to stick because it's tacky so let's go in with our flakes here oh. and then I'm just going to then add these on so I'm just going to put a load on here and if you've still got glue on your hands then it will stick. Obviously it looks like a mess, 
but what we're going to do is we're just going to go circular motions and you can see here I've not put near enough glue that I needed to so what we're going to do we can still use this because we've got that rustic feel but what we can do is let's not waste it so you can start again absolutely you can start again or just go back to your stencil so let's take our stencil again and then we're just going to overlay that now it makes it a little bit easier to overlay because you've got the outline from the gold so work it move it twist it into position which is fine there we go and then i'm going to repeat what i've been doing and then i'm just going to pick that up and then we're just going to dab through so let's go into all of these little bits and i am just pushing this is where you might want to use like a little finger dauber to get into all the tiny, tiny little pieces or a stencil brush. If you've got a stencil brush, again, with a stencil brush, you are going to want to make sure that you give it a firm, firm clean. So let's tap that up into there. Gildan Flakes, it really, really is forgivable. In the fact if you do miss any bits then it can look quite smart and rustic so i wouldn't stress too much so let's take that off and then we're going to prise that off now i can see that we've got a lot more of a better coverage so let's take that off incidentally these are layered in stencils so you can layer on top. So you could do the first layer. So you could do the first layer. Do what I've done there with the glue, the gilding flakes, buff it all off. Then put the next layer. Now that one could be the copper if you want. So put it over the top, glue through, let it go tacky, copper, and then do the third layer over the top and that could be silver or if you've got a colour gilding flakes use a colour gilding flakes so flakes you can still layer over the top if you want to doesn't make layering stencils redundant so let's move this one back in and then we're going to repeat what I've done but we're going to go in like so so this is the the fire part so let's buff all that off you can see now we've got a much much better coverage by going through it and in actual fact it's probably it's probably worked out well in my favor that i missed a few bits because i've never actually gone and re pop the stencil back in place and I can see there's a benefit of doing that because it really shows the little bits that you've missed so although that was unintentional in future I might intentionally kind of miss little bits so I can layer the stencil back so what we're now going to do is we're going to buff any excess off we're just going to buff it, move it all the way around, taking all that off. Let's put my sponge, actually I won't put it in because, oh no, I won't need it. Let's take a microfibre cloth, let's take all of that and then there we go. <laughs> How cool is that? So that there there we go that could be through any stencil that you want now that's the fire component 
So what about now finishing it off with the ice? I've used it on white card. It could be black. It could be craft. It could be pattern paper, any that you want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop this down like so. So we've now got our topper. So that, what's that? Six and a half. So actually let's, let's even this up. So four and a half, sorry, four and a quarter by six and a quarter. You know what I'm like, I like to even it all up. So four and a quarter by six and a quarter. So that's us now got our topper. We've used our liquid stay sticky glue, gold gilding flakes on a white smooth cardstock, and that's us good to go. Now you can use it and leave it like that. But let's take our double-sided adhesive sheets. Remember, if you've got a Crafter's Companion ones, they're exactly the same. They are exactly the same. It's just these are sticks too, of course. Now, what I'm going to do is let's just roughly cut that just slightly bigger than what I need. So let's peel back enough. Now don't bin these, I keep these because you could blend, you could instead of blending from your glass mat or craft mat, you can do it on these. Or you've maybe seen if I've got a big project, I'll take the backing off my foam pads first and then I'll just stick it onto a non-stick backing from your double-sided adhesive sheets and it makes it a lot quicker. So let's take our image. Now what we want to do, so this side is sticky. So we want to put that straight on, but I want to make sure that I get it right over the top. So I'm going to do it the reverse way. So I'm going to go face down into the sticky layer. And then we're going to press. Now, if I trim with my scissors, I'm going to start to gunk it up and same with my guillotine. So what to do, when you trim it, don't trim on the sticky layer trim just a mill or so on your cardstock and that stops it from sticking to the blade or your scissors so i'm actually cutting onto the white cardstock not actually cutting off the sticky layer so we can see that we've got that one and then it just means that you're not having to fight with all the sticky gunk on your guillotine or your scissors. So now that we've got that layer, let's press in, just make sure that we've got a really, really nice coverage, like so. And then let's take that back in off. So just let's get pokey tool. that corner same as before keep the back in even though it's a logo you've still got that non-stick back in now that is all sticky so let's take a bit of scrap paper just printer paper and then let's use our iridescent glitter iridescent glitter does work best for this or you could use any light glitter but you're not actually want to take away from the gold we want to enhance it so now we're going to, oh, foil press is saying it's ready for the next technique that I'll do in a minute. So we're just going to sprinkle that over the top. Press that in. Like so. Tap all that excess off. I'm just going to take a paintbrush and take all that off all that excess off like so and then oh, oh close one let's pop all of that back in for now 
move that out of the way. Now we've got, look at that, absolutely fab fire and ice. So we've got a layer of the gold gilding flakes, then a layer of the double sided adhesive sheets, and then your iridescent glitter over the top. Absolutely fantastic. And then we're not going to create a card as such but i will layer them onto a little bit of cardstock just so that you can see how it would look so if i do a little bit of gold so what did i say four and a quarter by six and a quarter so let's do just over four and a quarter by just over six and a quarter to give me a thin gold layer in actual fact let's just make that so i would say this is about three mils over four and a quarter and three mils over six and a quarter let's just trim that slightly there we go so very very fine gold layer and then this one we can do four and a half by six and a half. I might trim it still. Oh no, that'll be fine. So then what we can do is this could then go onto a card. And all that you need to do is put a sentiment maybe a few gems or pearls and that is all that you need to do to create a lovely card with the fire and ice so let's bring that in there so let's press that and then let's add our tape here onto the black. And then what a spectacular card. And there's a recipient It's going to be like, oh my gosh, how did you make that? Or they'll probably ask first, where did you buy that? And then when you say you made it, they'll have no idea how you made that. I'm actually just going to trim there. There we go. How fab is that? Isn't that stunning? Maybe just a few little die cut butterflies. Actually, it says me that we're going to finish a card. Shall we do that? Let's take timeless butterflies and let's do one two and let's do three so if we do these in gold so let's take these down so much for this just being technique based, eh? You know what I'm like. Might actually be better with black butterflies. Let's have a look. There's one. So let's go one, two. And then three. Let's try it with black and see. Let's run that one through in a minute. Just because it's a silhouette feel, sometimes black is better.
Yeah. Therefore. Yep. So, let's take our wet glue. Definitely your wet glue for this one because it needs to dry through the grains of the glitter. So let's bend the wings. You can, of course, add a sentiment. But there we go. Really, really like that. Really like how that looks. Maybe a little banner sentiment into there. Actually, what about... Says me. <laughs> Gosh, we're ending up with a full complete project at this rate. Let's do, let's do congratul, or s yeah, congrat, let's do congratulations. Congratulations. So let's take, congratulations. bring in and me saying that this would be a quick tutorial as well and I've still got my foil press one to do congratulations and then let's just freehand cut what's great is you don't need to be neat with these ones you can be on the wonk as you cut I'm just going up to the edge, like so, and then let's go in with a little bit of gold once again, so we're repeating our steps, so we're going to go gold, and then a little bit of black. So I'm just going to let that sit just for a moment because it is a non-porous background. So I need to let that just go off just before I lift it up and then start to trim around. So it just gives me a moment or two to tidy these bits up while I'm waiting on that. You guys know that watch these quite often. I'm getting better at tidying as I go. So that can go out the way. Let's put the stamp out the way and then we can finish this card off. So let's bring that. So these are the Simply Sentiments. These launched with the floral stamps that Sheena launched a good couple of months ago. I think I'm packaging now. Right. That will have gone off now. So the same. You can be neat with the guillotine if you want or your paper trimmer. But these really are forgiven that you don't need to and then last but by no means least add our glue I will need to add it onto a card blank tiny tiny layer so what did I say so Five by seven will do. So let's take an eight by eight and chop it down. And the reason I do have five by seven card blanks, but I prefer top fold, as many of you know. So that, that can go in the bin. I can keep that for something else. 
So I've got my top fold, five by seven, card blank. So let's, before I do the sentiment, let's just add that onto there. Pop that on. Hold down. I'm going to turn that around and I'm flattening the butterflies, but I can lift the wings up. Now do bear in mind you will need to let the glue dry for quite a wee while on this. And then let's take our sentiment freehand cut and then real I'll go down. Yeah, there. Let's take four. Oh, that was a perfect size foam pad strip. And because there's going on glitter, I'm going to use some wet glue. And then there we go. From just doing a background, technique wise, with a five and ice. How fab has that turned out? Really, really fab. So there is one of the techniques so we can see if I bring that in so liquid glue through a stencil on a white card stock then use the gold gilding flakes put a layer of double-sided adhesive sheet over the top then the iridescent glitter that I've used from Kingfisher use the simply sentiments for congratulations die cut three different size shaped butterflies within black card matte and layered and pop it onto a five by seven card the Gilded flake layer was four and a quarter by six and a quarter and then thin mats and layers all the way around. So there's that one. And then this next one will not make a complete card, but what we will do is we'll show you the technique. So instead of doing the gilded flakes and the stay sticky glue through a stencil, let's create our background with the foil press first. So I'm going to use the ornate swirls. So I have got, as you can see here, it lined up the best that I can. Unfortunately, it's not overly great. I don't have another overhead, but we will just need to bear with. So first things first, let's get everything ready. There we go. It would help if I actually showed you. So we just want to make sure that we've got everything good to go. To make sure we've got enough foil, sized foil, and let's chop down my card because it'll be getting trimmed anyway. And I think that should be about it. So let's go to. I'm going to go and actually do reset because I know my machine. Usually for a big background, I would say round about 50 seconds. But we're power on, we're on green, which means we're ready to go. I'm going to go to a minute because, as I say, I know my machine. So we're going to take our background. So let's take the background. Let's set that on into place. You know me, I like to put my carbon plate over the top and then we're going to press start. So that's just going to do the countdown from a minute. So that's going to give enough time to then, of course, run through. I'm going to have to move these bits out of the way because 
I will need to use my G2 and I had stuff in front of it and I switched on. I am now. So G2 foil press. You don't need anything because it's an optical sensor. It's a beam within the G2. We can then just put the, the foil press plate through. If you're using a junior, again, you don't need to do anything because the carbon plate that you've got is the size of the junior. If you're using our original OG white A4 Gemini, you will need an extender plate that I'm sure is still in stock across on the website. You can have a look. If it is, I'll uh, link it in the description. I think the foil press is still available for the UK or no, US. I think Junior's available for UK, Foil Press is available US, I think, anyway. Have a look across on the website. Now, it's beeped to say that it's ready. So, we're going to go with our foil. So, we're going to go shiny side, facing down. We're then going to come along with our black cardstock. I'm going to layer that over the top. And then we're going to put our carbon plate over the top again. There's just a little lip there at the side. I'm going to move this around to give me space to pull out. Now, I don't have a camera set because the camera I set up and focused on the G2, I'm using for the foil press. So it's just going through the Gemini, the G2 at the side. So let's take this one out now. And if I lift and then move that out the way, let's turn that one. And then let's see, I don't want to go too close and then it goes blurry, but on the other hand, I want to try and get close enough. So let's go and peel. Look at that. Get in there. How fab is that? Absolutely fab. I tell you what, while we're here, shall we do the waste technique? Let's do the waste technique. Now look at that. Absolutely fan dabby dozy. Now, waste technique, let's take another bit of black card. That'll be fine. Because we'll foil on a black card. I've popped my foil press plate back in. Don't need that. Let's take that off. And it has gone. It has gone red, so let me, there we go. There we are, got there in the end. It's gone red, which just means that it's heating up again. So let's go back. And then I'm just going to trim this down. So this is the part, it's the equivalent of using the Gildan Flakes and the Stay Sticky Glue. So instead of using the glue the card and the stencil with the gilding flakes that's now our back our backdrop fab isn't it absolutely fab so what we can then do once again while the foil press plate is heating up let's take our double-sided adhesive sheets again and then let's just roughly cut that off so let's peel that off Remember, that side's sticky, so we're wanting to go face down. So we're going to go face down into the sticky layer. Press in. Make sure we've got a really nice, smooth press. And then let's take the guillotine. Once again, we're going to cut onto the cardstock. We're not actually trimming the sticky layer. You can see it there you are, see there's a little bit of black. That's what we're doing. We're cutting onto the cardstock to stop it gunking up. So let's peel off. Peel off. And then there we go. So we've now got our background now we're not going to do the glitter just yet we're going to do the background with the waist so we've got the waist we've got our black card so this is what we're going to file onto we need a shim now i like to use two shims 
at 300 GSM. So I'm just going to roughly cut it to five by seven. I think it's about five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. It doesn't really matter as long as it fills and covers the back. So we've got our waste foil. We've got our black card we're going to foil onto. I've then got two shims. We'll also need our magnetic shim from our junior. I use this one all the time for my foil press. If you've only got one, don't worry. You can use this for your junior and with the foil press. You can go back and forwards absolutely fine. But I like to keep one just for my foil press. It means that I don't have to keep chopping and changing. And then we will need our carbon plate as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hedge my bits. So it's not, it's still saying red that you can see here still saying that it's red now i'm going to go once again because i know my machine i am going to he says so it would not let me do that until i forgot until it is up to temp so i'm just going to switch that off because to be fair i have had it on for a wee while so let's switch on. So actually, there's a good point. So that's it completely off. So switch it on at the side. Then switch the power button on. It will go red to start with, no matter what. And then we're just letting that come to temperature. So we'll let that sit for a moment. Let's move that. And then let's take... Let's just do our background now while we're here and peel that off. So get a corner and peel. So that's going to be iridescent silver or iridescent glitter over silver foil. So let's take that off and then we're going to sprinkle our glitter. I know obviously I'm using it all, but you don't use it all. You use very, very, very little. So let's press all that in. I think I've used glitter more the last couple of weeks than I have the last couple of years. So we're going to then take that off let's use a paintbrush to take some of that excess off let's put this back in here make sure to put that off and then look at that there we go so it yeah, just a wee while before getting ready for this video, I had the background already filed and I thought, I wonder what it looks like once we've done the ice technique with the glitter. And you'll get a different look depending on what colour card you use and what colour foil that you use. But what a... Oh, I just... Oh, I think that's so, so smart. So, so smart. And then that can simply go on a card, go on to whatever you want, really. Like so. I'm actually inclined, just while this is heating up, I'm actually thinking, <laughs> shall we just do a matte and layer? May as well. We may as well. So that, so let me trim that to a proper quarter of an inch. So that is six and a half by four and a half. So let's take a white layer and let's do four and three quarters by six and three quarters so that's going to give me a white layer let's bring in black 
and let go just under just under five and just under six Not too big so literally just over four and three quarters by just over five and three quarters yeah there we go nice finely i do not know what's going on with my foil press but it's not heating up do you know what i'm going to do let's trim that to four and a quarter by six and a quarter and give this a small black matting layer just over four and a quarter just over six and a quarter to give me a really really thin black matting layer which is going to sit yes get in looking good looking good so let's get my double sided tape I'm going to switch my foil press off and start again keeping in mind probably my foil press is one of the most used foil presses that there is so I'm going to take the back in off here actually do you know what I'm going to do so let's add that on and then let's take I'm going to take bear with me a sec while I pick stick my head in the way so I've got some white ribbon this is just sticks twos ribbon so let's pop that on <laughs> I'm laughing at the time said at the start this is going to be relatively quick and we are at 48 minutes not that I'm complaining whatsoever so let's wrap that round here and then let's secure that so that we're going to lift up on foam pads these here are going to stay flat Must be something wrong with my foil press. Hey, at least, at least I got my top layer done. I need to get it sorted and then do the waste another time. Although you will find it on our Crafters Companion YouTube channel. Right, five by seven card blank. Here we go. I'm just going to use a normal 5x7 card blank because it is going to go on its side, so therefore it's going to be a top fold. So let's just. Ah, I think I know. Ah, I think one of my connectors is broken, that's why. Right. Now we know the issue. So let's add all of these in. So if I peel that, that, and that. 
So let's put that one on there. Let's bring in our foam pads and add some height. into here so if I add that into there press that on yep looking good now I'm not going to do a bow for this. I'm just going to do a cross knot. Like so, and then what I'm also going to do, where is it? Where is it? This is from the Craft Box 20. This is the layering stencils that I'm going to be having a play with. And you get these white paper flowers. So I thought about, what about just putting one there? And then an itchy stomach and then let's do do I want mm. if I do celebrate but where I know where I'll, I know what I'll do. So let's bring in strip of white card. Yeah, I know. So let's move that out of the way. Bring in a white card. Let's use the celebrate. going to do is let's come close to the bottom because I'm going to trim it a bit more like so happy with that let's press that in let's just square that up let's bring in some black And then I just want to intensify that. So I'm going to do that again. Nope, that's jumped. So we're going to change that. So the only thing you need to watch for your large stamping platform is a shadow. That's why I always say, get out of position, stop, let it settle, then press. So stop, let it settle and press, lift that up, I'm going to do that again, stop, let it settle, press and then there we go, much better. So let's move that out the way, move that out the way, move that out the way definitely not going to be able to do the background because the foil press just isn't playing ball so I'm going to chop let's, let's do three inch I know there's a bigger gap at the left hand side than there is at the right hand side but 
bring that back in here. Like so. And then, I don't know, let's go a little bit closer. So that's what, just over to the quarter. Yeah, that's fine. So let's bring a bit of black card in. And then, so this, I'm going to do what I like to do. And this side here is going to go right up against the edge. So there's only going to be a mat and layer, top, bottom, and left-hand side. And that's it. So let's just chop that off. Let's give ourselves a little mat and layer. Again, a little mat and layer there. So we've got the celebrate into place just to make that stand out a tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little bit more. Let's bring in a little bit of white. You know me, I'm all about the layers. So why change a habit of a lifetime? So I'm going to do the same again. This time I'm just going to do my white layer. A little bit thinner than my black layer. It's just to make that sentiment stand out. A teeny tiny bit more from the black so let's bring that in I'm going to celebrate with that and then let's bring in let's, I keep forgetting that's dried up put another hole Take our flower, paper flower, let's pop that into there. Let's take our foam pads and because we're going on to glitter, let's add our tacky glue. Let's pop that into there and then these pearls come in that box as well. So what I'm going to do is let's, just going to position first, so I'll do one, one large, two medium, just to add a little bit of extra, yeah, so three there, one there, I know technically it's an even number, but on the other hand it's not because it's two different sections. That's how you can get away with it. So it's three and then one. And then let's just pop these back in. And then to finish off my two techniques that I said we wouldn't be doing finished projects. We've done finished projects. So let's take our Pick up tool. There we go. And then there is our foil and ice and our fire and ice. Our two 
technique. So fire and ice using the Gildan Flakes, Stay Sticky Glue, a stencil, and then Gildan Flakes, a layer of double-sided adhesive sheets, and then iridescent glitter over the top. And then this one, foil and ice. So we foiled our background silver foil onto black cardstock, a layer of double-sided adhesive sheets, and then iridescent glitter. Celebrate, and in actual fact, there's white ribbon in Craft Club, so we could have used that, but either way. Uh, celebrate ribbon, or celebrate and the flower and the pearls from Craft Box 20, which is the layering stencils, a little bit of white satin ribbon to finish off. There we go, pearls into place. So if I bring that one, so there's our fire and ice here. And then there is our newly named foil and ice. Smart is that. There we go. So, hope you enjoyed them. The little impromptu finished end demos there. So what was just going to be technique wise is now ended up in two finished cards, but really, really pleased with how they look. Of course, the only thing that we've not done that I usually do, and that's just add in a blank insert, but you can do that at home if you're going to replicate it again. So when it comes to the Stay Sticky Glue, my recommendation is if it's a brand new dry ink pad, just make sure you massage the glue into the pad. If you've used it for a wee while, then put the glue onto your glass mat or craft mat and then take it from there. Righty-o, if you do make anything, replicate, change or anything like that, if you pop it on social, do feel free to tag me. You don't have to, but do, uh, do feel free. You're more than welcome to tag me to see what you've been doing. Until the next time on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel, we will see you again. Doodles.